On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer gave an update on Vince McMahon being out of WWE's creative process. He reported last week that Triple H is the man making all of the key decisions in creative right now. He noted that McMahon is out of the process at the moment. He said on Observer Radio the decision was made by Endeavor TKO Group Holding CEO Ari Emanuel. Vincent Kennedy McMahon was the guy making all the decisions. And now Vince was in fact overruled. Even though when he merged the company, he was told that this would not happen. Huh. It did happen. Bang takes a little bang, doesn't it? It is a really interesting thing. In the statement when Ari Emanuel was talking about the reasons the stock is down, and he mentioned Vince's name, it is very interesting, I think, what is going to happen. To be fair, I think that comment that Ari made about uh, Vince when he talked about the reason the stock being down was uh, more related to Vince's ability to do certain things with the stock that he owned as opposed to him like being involved in creative. But that's irrelevant because he is now out. Vince's power is clearly marginalized. There's no way around that. Uh, Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated reported last Friday that Emmanuel was buying the change. Multiple contacts within WWE and UFC have confirmed that Emmanuel, who wields power as the Endeavor CEO, is behind the change. Emmanuel has long been a firm believer that in order for an organization to be as effective as possible, people need to do the job they are assigned. In this case, that approach has empowered Levesque to exert his full influence in the company's creative sphere. The acquisition of WWE was official last month. They merged. And uh, Levesque is the chief content officer. So his job is to do creative. And uh, and Vince was just uh, every now and then just doing stuff. And now he will not. He is uh, out. As Dave noted last week, you know, anything can change. But you know what? Anything also can't change. So hopefully he's out forever. I hope he never comes back. That's my speech. I agree. I enjoyed coming to your TED Talk today. Thank you. This guy was incompetent. I mean, he had a good idea every now and then, but... Uh, at, it, at the later stage. It was abundantly here. clear. the whole life here. It was abundantly clear by 2018 that he had lost it. And 2018 and 2019, and it all sucked. Mm-hmm. It was horrible. He He couldn't keep anything. He couldn't keep track of anything. There was absolutely nothing in the way of long-term storytelling. It was a mess. And, you know, I... Listen, I hated it subjectively, and I ranted about it week after week after week. And also, objectively, they were siphoning viewers. Their their year-over-year declines were like... They were insane. And, uh, and he was in charge with his stupid storytelling. And finally, you know, he uh, he had he ran into a problem or two, and Triple H got the uh, book, and all of a sudden, you know, wow, we're actually doing long term storytelling. You may not like it, I don't care, but the fact is, they were doing long term storytelling. Arguably, some of it was maybe too long term, but uh, look at the year over year declines following Triple H getting it. They vanished. In fact, it's now year over year increases. You know, there was, uh, I think it was, um, uh, who was it that posted the, uh, there were like attendance, uh, attendance figures were posted. Brandon Thurston, I believe. Russell Novice. He he posted like, okay, here is how WWE is doing, uh, market to market. So exact market to exact market. Here is how AEW is doing, exact market to exact market. What does that mean? Well, you know, AEW runs Seattle. And then they come back to Seattle six months, eight months later. How did the show do now as compared to before? Well, for AEW, uh, you know, virtually every single market, there has been a decline. Some of them a big decline. In WWE, virtually every single market that they have gone to of late compared to six, eight months ago has had not just an increase, but a big increase. Okay? So get rid of this guy. Like, get rid of Vince. He's useless. Like, you have an idea every now and then, send Hunter an email. He can delete it if he wants, or he can look at it or whatever. But the place is doing significantly better without the guy, and uh, and I'm happy to see him gone. Plus, he's a well, creep. Yeah, all of those things. And this is what happens when you sell. And he was able to cash out, and he should just go ahead and cash out because 
they have somebody that can navigate the business world better than he can. His name is Nick Khan. They have somebody that can navigate the business end of things, even at a higher level. His name is, is Ari. And then from you go from there to what you talked about with him losing speed off of his fastball as time has gone on, which is very natural and, and not surprising, but it did get real bad there for a while. And under Paul Levesque, again, people can swear up and down that things weren't different when Vince was gone and that he truly was not gone. And yes, he did push in his influence when he could, but Things did get better. Things did start slowing down, making more sense. Things weren't changed at the last minute all the time. All of those things, including morale improving. You know, again, this is this was going to happen at some point anyway. You know, the, the thought of him being able to stay there in that corporation, again, like you mentioned at the beginning of the show, Ted Turner whose name is on all of these channels, was pushed out of his company when the AOL Time Warner merger went through, and he had no control over anything anymore. And he swore he was going to be able to, and he thought he was going to be able to. And we see this situation here with Vince. Look, they were smart enough to build in things, you know, with his stock to where if something happens, we can keep distance from Vince because this is Vince's reputation, you know, for as much as, you know, you want to say about anybody being two bad groups lumped in together here, you know, no matter how dirty Ari is, we know how dirty Vince is. If it got dirtier, they put in checks and balances to distance themselves. So this was going to happen at some point anyway. And frankly, if it's happening now and truly happening now, I'm for it. But then again, if anybody's cynical about this, to be fair, people have heard this a billion times. Actually, they haven't heard it a billion times. They've heard it like three times. And you know what? I'm a positive guy. I can think of a lot of jobs that Vince can do now that he is no longer doing creative. He could bus tables and catering. He could work the front desk at that gym at Titan Towers. You know, when you work the front desk, you get a free membership. You can work out when you're done with your shift. Maybe maybe somebody can treat him like he has reportedly treated people at the front desk at tanning salons and such. So let's not uh, go there, please. Why? You're the one who called him a creep. Well, he is a creep. And you weren't wrong. He is a creep. But anyway, uh, good riddance. Bye-bye. Kofi Kingston turned a dream into reality in his native country. He uh, opened the Klingsons Click for Quality Education Foundation, opened his first library and computer center in his birthplace of Kumsai, Ghana. Foundation was launched by Kingston and his mother a year ago. Its mission is to build top quality computer labs and library media centers for junior high schools across Ghana, particularly in underprivileged areas. So he was very, very happy we did it. Thanks to everyone who donated to the GoFundMe. Generous contributions help make this vision a reality. Ever grateful for your willingness to give. And so uh, he was born in Ghana, moved to the U.S. when he was one. And in 2019, a WWE 24 documentary followed Kingston as he went back to Ghana to celebrate the year of return. That was the year he won the WWE title at Mania 35. And then uh, it notes he is currently feuding with Ivar of the Viking Raiders. <laughs> that was like when those things were added there at the end. <laughs> yes. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.